Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mark Vines Show. I am Mark Vines, and we are going to have another interesting and exciting discussion about politics. Well, you know, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, and you can't escape politics. Where a lot of you live, you probably watch football, you watch basketball games, you watch hockey, you watch all sorts of different events, but the sport that we have up here is politics. It's all politics all the time. And that's what I want to talk about today, because as some of you may know, we have an election coming up in about five months, this being in the middle of July of 2020. Now, <clears throat> take a look around you. How, how do you like it? How, how do you like what's happening to your country right now? Are you happy? I know I'm not I'm not happy at all with what I'm seeing. Now, uh, I've been an investigator for quite a long time, as you know. And uh, as an investigator, I kind of start putting the, the dots together, the evidence together, building a case, building, putting together the circumstantial evidence. And what do you see? What are the, What's the commonalities that you see out there across the land in, in all these cities that are burning to the ground and people are being killed, the homicide rates skyrocketing, uh, vandalism, pillaging? What, what do you have, What's in common? You got it. Democrats in charge of all of these cities. And if you like what you see and you vote for Joe Biden, that's exactly what you're going to get. Only it's going to be every city and it's going to be just destruction all around. So tonight I want to talk about some things as we lead into the election. And I'm going to be talking about single issue voters in my opinion of single issue voters. And and for those of you that don't live in the Washington, D.C. area, kind of talk about the culture here inside the Beltway and the culture pretty much everywhere else that's not in the Beltway. You know, <clears throat> I've been up here for quite some time, uh, military, law enforcement, federal law enforcement, and I've been working in D.C. Uh, for quite some time. This is my third trip through the area. And uh, I get to travel on occasion. I don't get to travel as much as I want to, but uh, it's nice to get outside of the Beltway every once in a while because I get out there and I see normal people, you know, rational people, people that can think, people that aren't crazy. I'm talking about you guys. I'm talking about those that are smart and don't live in the Washington, D.C. area and aren't exposed to the political bloodbath that we have up here every single day. Because you see, where I live uh, up here in the largest county in Virginia, which is Fairfax County, um, it's kind of like being behind enemy lines. I, I could imagine being a, a paratrooper during the Second World War, and you jump out of an airplane, and and uh, the plane drops you off in the wrong drop zone, and you end up behind enemy lines, and, and you just feel stranded. Well, that's, well, welcome to my world. That's kind of how I feel. I feel like I'm behind enemy lines up here with all these liberals, and it's crazy town. I live in an area where if you put on your Trump hat like I do, my, my family won't get in the car with me. They, they won't go into a store with me because they're afraid that somebody's going to come up and shoot us or hit us or uh, uh, beat us up. Now, I always tell my wife, I say, I'm, I'm really not worried about it because, you know, they're, they're liberals. And, well, they beat up, they like to beat up on old women and teenage boys. That's pretty much what they do. If you fall into that category, you're probably in danger. I'm probably not. But I want you to think about the fact that my family has to think that way when they get out of the car and they simply are wearing a shirt or a hat depicting the name of somebody that they support. I mean, I didn't realize I was living in East Germany back in the day or the Soviet Union or some South American country. I didn't realize that my life could be in danger because I supported I support a particular candidate in the United States of America. But that's where we are. And again, if you want that, if that's what you want in this country, then by all means, vote for Joe Biden come November. But I, for one, don't want to live in that, that world. What I like is when I leave the D.C. area and I go anywhere else. Uh, let's see where have I been recently. Georgia, I've been to Ohio, I've been to Mississippi, um, certain parts of Pennsylvania, and I see Trump banners up, and I see Trump flags up, I see Trump bumper stickers, oh, I saw some down in Florida, although you Floridians, I'm starting to worry about you a little bit, but I, I did see some signs down there, <clears throat> and I didn't see anybody being beaten up or shot or assaulted because they had those things, but I do worry about that up here in, in Northern Virginia, and uh, I want you just just to think about, you know, what has been going on 
in the last several months and ask yourself, who is responsible for that? It, it, are any of these cities or states run by Republicans? Any? Can you name one? Because I can't. If you can think of one, reach out to me and let me know because I can't think of one. <clears throat> They're all run by Democrats. And let's talk about you know some of the great things that Democrats have done recently. Okay, well, we're letting in illegal aliens, right? And I said illegal aliens. I'm all for immigration, which I think most Republicans are, actually. Uh, my wife's family immigrated to this country. Great, great thing. Great program. I said illegal aliens. And I always point that out to Democrats. And they say that I must be some sort of a racist because I, I don't support immigration. And I, no matter how many times I say legal immigration, they can't seem to get that that point across. Now, uh, what I but what I do is I ask them this. I say, look, we, we've got Reagan International and then we've got Dulles. Now, Dulles is an international airport and you have to go through customs when you, if you come from overseas and you come here and you, you, you got to go through customs and meet with those folks. And I say, you know, is that, a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Should we have customs, a customs checks point up there at uh, Dulles? Should we have that? Everybody says, well, of course you have to have customs. Well, why? Well, we have to keep drugs out. We have to keep guns out. We have to keep bad people out. Yeah, I agree. Now, so let's follow the logic here. What you're telling me then is if I wanted to come into this country illegally, if I was a terrorist or, or anyone else, um, it would be a big mistake to try to enter the United States by going through Dulles. But if I went down to the border, whether it's on the southern border or the northern border, you don't want to have any checkpoints there. Do I understand that? And then they just kind of look at you like, oh, yeah, well, you, you got me now. But folks, why do, why do we have immigration laws? Um, I, I don't know if most of you have traveled around the world. Uh, I have. I've been around uh, the world quite a bit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that want to hurt us, right? Not everybody's our friend. Uh, this might surprise you, but not everybody likes the United States. There are people that want to hurt us, and we want to keep those people out of the United States. There are people that sell drugs. Where do you think many of the drugs come from? We have human trafficking. Where do you think that comes from? Um, we have to have immigration. We have to have borders. We have to have uh, the, these types of programs for your protection, for my protection. This is not to keep people out that want to work and want to have a better life. There's a process for that. Use the process. Okay, so what else have Demo uh, Democrats done for us lately? Let's see. We, we've had uh, illegal immigration. Oh, defunding of the police. How about that? How do we like defunding of the police? How is that working? Well, just check out the homicide rate just in the last few months and look how it spiked in our major cities. And you'll see just how well that is working, right? Now, while they're doing that, who's been letting people out of the prisons? Who's been doing that? The Democrats have been doing that. So let me get this straight. You're going to let criminals out of prisons and you're going to defund the police. And that's a good idea. And we're going to bring social workers in to talk people off the ledge and talk some sense into them. Right. That's going to work really, really well. Now, the Democrats have had an awful lot of time to fix the problems that they say are now problems. Um, when... Last I checked, Bill Clinton was in office for eight years. Barack Obama was in office for six or eight years. So that's 16 years between the two of them. And Joe Biden was vice president for, for eight of those. And he's damn near been in the Senate for 40 years. And they couldn't fix these problems. But now you just vote him in office and he's going to fix those problems and everything's going to be just right. Well, folks, <laughs> if you can't see what's going on, I, I don't know what to tell you. But I do know that you want no part of what these people are selling you. Now, look at what Donald Trump gave you. He gave you a great economy. He gave you uh, the lowest unemployment rate, really, I think we've had, but certainly in certain um, communities, with sub-communities within, within the United States, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and other minority groups, it's gone up, uh, the, or the employ unemployment rate has gone way, way down. Our economy was booming before uh, the before the pandemic. Now, you know, when it came to respirators, when it came to medication, when it came to masks and all those things, you know, Obama had eight years to fix that as well. 
and it was not even an issue. Now, if you remember back in January, what were we doing in January? We, we, we had an impeachment going on. Do you remember that? You know, it's funny how we don't even talk about the impeachment anymore. But we were in the middle of an impeachment. Did you hear one speech on the floor? And Adam Schiff went on and on and on speaking. Um, in fact, he, he would not shut up. But did he ever raise any issues about any viruses coming out of China? I don't remember it. Do you? No. But yet, now it's Trump's fault when he was in the middle of the, that impeachment hearing. What, I'll tell you another thing the Democrats have given us. They've given us the Russia investigation. They've given us the Russia investigation. When is the last time you saw a news report? Have you seen one? I haven't seen one. It's amazing how that went away. So we had the big Russian collusion story, which went on for about three and a half years, and then all of a sudden, it went away. It went away. It was a hoax. It was always a hoax. And Donald Trump at least has made an attempt to go after the people that were responsible for that. By the way, that's not over. You're not hearing about that in the news right now. But Durham's investigation is going on, and we may be hearing something about that shortly. And that's going to give us a lot of material to talk about. But that's what the Democrats have given us. Now, something else I notice that when I leave the D.C. bubble and I go out into the real world is this. And this is really what I want to talk about today and the point that I want to drive home. And it, that is this, that when I leave this area where it's 24-7 politics, it's all politics all the time. It's all, you know, if you're not into politics, don't move to the Washington, D.C. area. But when I leave the Washington, D.C. area, I realize that it's not politics 24-7. And people live real lives, and it's because they have real jobs, and they have real families, and they have a lot of things to do. So they aren't always thinking about politics. And uh, the people outside of the Beltway don't realize what a blood sport, and I mean a blood sport, the politics is in, in Washington, D.C. It is cutthroat. It is not for the thin-skinned. And uh, just look at the games that the de Democrats are playing, just as an example of you know how bad that can be. But we live in that world, but most people don't. And so when I get outside of the Washington, D.C. area, and I'm talking to people, they get really hung up on little things like, the, the, you know, I don't like the tweets. I don't like Trump's abrasiveness. He seems rude. He's always, can't he back off sometimes? Why isn't he a nicer person? Uh, you know, folks, <laughs> it's a blood sport. Politics, it's not for, not, none of these people, you know that none of these people are nice, right? You, you do know that. In fact, for you to run for uh, president of the United States, you have to be kind of sociopathic. If you think about it, you kind of have to be sociopathic. So when I when I hear people say that Donald Trump has mental issues, they all have mental issues. Uh, as a voter, it's really just a matter of which mental issues do you want running the White House? Because they all do. If you think that Barack Obama was not a narcissistic, selfish, really sociopathic person himself, you're crazy. He was just better at hiding it than a lot of these people. But what you have to do is you have to look at their actions and say, but those are the issue, those are the uh, the traits that I want in a leader and somebody that can get things done. You know, let me just back up and talk about this uh, being a soci sociopath for a second. You know, um, there there were there's studies that have been done that have said that uh, the vast majority of CEOs and leaders of organizations have sociopathic tendencies. They 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 really do. And I, and I know in the organizations I've been, that was absolutely true. I mean, just look at James Comey, for goodness sake. Now, that's a bad thing, but it's not always a bad thing. And to a certain extent, um, people have to have uh, th those traits. Uh, for example, could you imagine being a commander during the Second World War? Let's say you're Eisenhower um, or John C. Marshall or any one of these guys. And, you know, you're Eisenhower, and you're having to, it's June 6, 1944, and you're getting ready to launch the D-Day invasion. And you, you're struggling over the launch of this uh, operation. And the, the issue for him was the, the weather. You know, they, they didn't know if the weather was going to be good enough to uh, go ahead and, and sail across the English Channel and begin the invasion. And now, could you imagine being in a position where you know that as soon as you make this decision... By 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, thousands of men are going to be dead. 
as soon as you give that order. Now, then could you imagine giving that order and then going back into your room, looking at your wife, kissing her goodnight, and saying, I love you, honey, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, and then having a restful sleep. Could you imagine that? No, nobody could. But you have to have people that can make those types of decisions. Or let's say I'm a CEO of a, of a, a company that makes cars, and we're trying to do cutbacks. And I say, okay, well, we got to shut down that plant in Atlanta or that plant in Alabama. But when I do that, 7,000 people aren't going to have jobs once I make that decision and then go to bed that night and, and rest peace, peacefully. So you have to have you know, some of those traits in order to make those big decisions. So you have to understand that when we're talking about the president of the United States, you're not always going to like their personality, but you have to look at the results. And I can tell you that between these two options, and in come November, it's going to be a binary choice. It's going to be this or that. There's no going to be C, D, or E, all the above. It's going to be A or B. And you're going to have to make that decision. And do not be like a lot of people, uh, a lot of conservatives that I know, that say, look, he's not strong enough on abortion. Okay? Now, I, <laughs> I'm against abortion. I really am. But that's an issue. It's not the only issue. The president deals with all kinds of issues that he has to deal with. And uh, if you go down the litany of issues that the president has to deal with, there's going to be issues that you don't agree with, that you don't support him on. But I do know this, that when you aggregate the total of the issues that this guy has compared to Biden, you're, it's not even going to be close as to who you support. It's not a perfect world. Don't, don't think that it's going to be a perfect world. Uh, uh, these people are human. Uh, fraught with with problems, issues, just like we all do. But it is a binary choice. And I can tell you that in my lifetime, there is not going to be a more stark difference between the candidates than between these two. So do not get hung up on single issues and say, I'm going to sit this one out. You know what? I don't like either one of them. So I'm just not going to participate. Uh, don't Don't give me that answer. Do not come and tell me that you set this election out because you think that Donald Trump isn't nice enough for you. I have uh, someone in my circle, I won't mention who, but there's somebody in my circle that actually made the, the comment that, you know, in the last election, I, I was really disappointed in both of them. I'm a conservative, but they both disappointed me. And I wanted to teach them a lesson. I wanted to teach them a lesson. So I sat up because I didn't think either one of them earned my vote. Well, folks... That is naive, and that is just ridiculous. For, you're not proving any point to these candidates. Let's just be clear about that. What you may do, if there's enough people that think like you, is put us into a Marxist, socialist tyranny for the eight, eight, next eight years, maybe beyond. Maybe beyond. And why do I say beyond? Because you only have to look back over the last three and a half going on four years, and look at what these people did, and I mean the Obama administration did, and um, spying on the other campaign, setting people up, uh, wiretapping people without justification. And we only know about that because Donald Trump was elected. Think about that. We only know because Donald Trump was elected. If Hillary was elected, we would never know any of these things. James Comey would still be director of the FBI. Andy McCabe would still be there. Strzok and Page would still be doing whatever the hell they were doing behind closed doors. Just think about that. That ought to scare the hell out of you. And if you think that the next crew that comes in won't be doing the same thing, you've lost it. So get off of the single issue. There are lots of issues out there. Look at them. You're not going to get all of the your 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 Christmas list uh, out of out of Donald Trump. It's not going to happen. You're not going to agree with everything that he does, but you're going to agree with a hell of a lot more than what he does than Joe Biden. I can tell you that. And this is scary. If they will do these things to General Flynn, if they will do them to Carter Page and to all of the other people that they they violated violated over the last three years, and look at how those people General Flynn was bankrupted. Um, he was, his life was ruined. You know, the same thing with Carter Page. Their lives were ruined. Look at what they did. And these are people, these are powerful people. Imagine what those folks would do to you and I. And that should scare the hell out of you. So my warning 
to all you single voters out there is stop it. Vote for Donald Trump. And I, I tell you another thing, too. I cannot imagine anybody that was running back in 2016, any of the Republican candidates, that could have withstood the onslaught and the beating that this man has taken for the last three and a half years. He has really earned my respect in taking the beating that he's taken. So, folks, get out, vote. Make sure you get all your friends out to vote because the Democrats are going to be highly, highly motivated for this election. And we have to be more voted, more, more, uh, uh, more motivated to get out there and do it. So get your friends. You show up. Get the word out. So, folks, one of the things that can help uh, in getting that word out is spreading the message that's contained in this podcast. So I'm going to ask you to go to my Facebook page, give me a like, give me a follow. Spread this. Share this podcast with everybody that you know. So let's spread the word. Let's get motivated. And I'm going to get more and more fired up the closer we get to, the, to November, and I hope you do too. I've really enjoyed talking to you here today. Please keep listening. Give me a like. Give me a shout out. Talk to me on Facebook. And I am going to talk with you soon. Folks, this is Mark Vines. Have a great day and a great rest of the week. And I will be talking with you soon.